today we are going to go to a nice little sampling and tasting. You guys are coming with me. Let's go. go. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Carlos. Thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Corner. We're kind of like in a mobile Whiskey Corner because today uh, you're coming with me to a nice little tasting. We're going to go check out one of the local bars here in the uh, Tampa area where they're going to have one of the uh, master distillers or the master distiller for chicken cock at, um, at their establishment. And he might be giving away some, uh, some free samplings of a new... Uh, whiskey that they're coming out with the uh, double oat so chicken cock double oat so we are driving there and you guys are coming with me let's uh let's see if uh, you guys like this little uh different take on things all right guys we are here at uh gaspar's bar and grill and uh liquor store i'm assuming so uh let's go uh check this out doing good Uh, so we're here at uh, Gaspar's. Never been here, but uh, really good, uh, really good selection. Damn, I'm surprised I've never came over here. That rocket top, straight ride. <laughs> Whole bunch of uh, four gates. Oh, the bourbon down under one. Oh, nice little spider there. 123 proof. Gas bars. Not a bad price. Might have to uh, leave with this. The price is going up every <laughs> Damn, guys. This is, uh, look at this. Some of these Chattanoogas I haven't seen in a while. I haven't seen that kind of thing yet. Rebel Strength, or I mean Rebel uh, Cast Strength. Got a bunch of Doc Swinsons. I think I'm going to be coming to this store a lot more lately. Some Blue Rums, Whistle Pig 12. That's a good price on that too. I'm not a whistle pig uh, guy, but there you go to my uh, mellow corn fans. All right, guys. Well, uh, that's the end. But uh, we're here for the event, so uh, let's do this. Tell you a little bit about the uh, the history first before we actually get into it. Sure. Um, you know, I, I do tasting all over the country. And what do you think the first question is? How long have you been in the business? Well, that, that's that's right. The first question I get is, where did you come up with that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I'm used to it now. So yeah, yeah. Really nice actually said, a lot of people, you know, they find find it humorous, and so they buy a bottle, but then when they open, they say, "Wow, I'm <laughs> good." So anyhow, it's actually no brand. Originated in Paris, Kentucky. 1856. It's 100 years over now. So uh, it's, it's that's old. old. That is old. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, easy. That was right. That's <laughs> old. Easy. <laughs> the security. Anyhow, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, James A. Miller built this distillery in Paris, Kentucky, in 1856. And he was making a whiskey he was so proud of he felt it was worth crowing about. So that's why he called it Chicken Cod Whiskey. And remember, in 1856, Americans were still using the old English language. 
and the term for a male chicken was a cock. The term rooster didn't come about until late 1800s, early 1900s. A rooster wasn't even a word then. So, anyhow, so that's where it got its name. Okay. Uh, in the 1920s, a pint of chicken cock whiskey sold for $14. Today's money wow. that's equivalent to about $140 a pint. Wow. So, you see it, you know, it gives you an appreciation for, you know, the legality of it. And if you yeah. wanted to drink, you better be able to afford a drink. It wasn't cheap. <laughs> in about 2011, the founder of Grain and Barrel Spirits, the company owns it now, his name's Marty Antelope. Marty was looking for a whiskey drink. And uh, he was down in Bardstown, uh, Kentucky one day. And, and they have down there, they have a museum called the Oscar Getz Museum. And it's the entire history of the whiskey industry in Kentucky. But there's a lot of old bottles on display there. And there were some old chicken dock bottles. So Marty saw it, was interested. So he did some research, found the history interesting. So he was able to acquire the brand names. So in 2012, Chicken Cock was back on the shelf. But it wasn't the high quality whiskey the brand was known for for many years. You know, Marty, Strain and Barrel, small company. They didn't own a distillery, don't have any operational assets. But he needed cash flow. And so the best way to get cash flow, he could source some six month old whiskey put it in an aluminum bottle, and then he flavored it. They had a root beer flavor, they had a cinnamon flavor, they had a couple different flavors. And it served its purpose, generate cash flow. But it wasn't the high quality of whiskey that the brand was known for. A couple years later, he was using that same six month old whiskey, he came out with Chicken Cock Heritage, which was a bourbon, Chicken Cock Bootlegger, which was a bourbon rye blend. Same thing, it, it was okay if you want to mix a drink, but it wasn't the high quality sipping whiskey that the brand was known for. So I've been in the business 45 years. 2017, uh, I decided to get out of the corporate rat race and ramp up my uh, my retirement plan. And I was not retired, but started my own consulting company. And so, Rain and Barrel Spirits was one of my first clients. And I was helping them with some supply chain issues. And then one day, Marty came to me and he shared his vision of wanting to resurrect Chicken Cock back to Kentucky and bring it back to the high quality prominence that was brand new many, many years ago. He said, Would you help me do that, resurrect it back to Kentucky, and, and serve in the role of master to stuff? He said, Do it on one condition. Stop buying all this young crap. And everything we do, our objective is focused on bringing the brand back to its high quality product. So that's what we've been doing for the last six years. First thing I did was negotiate an agreement with Bardstown Bourbon Company. Are you familiar with Bardstown Bourbon Company? Yeah. Great facility. So that's the home of Chicken Company. But basically, I have oversight over everything they do. You know, I give them the mash bills. The mash bill for the bourbon that you're, you're tasting here 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley. And it's. Uh, it's 90 proof, okay? All right. In addition, our rye that you're going to taste next is a 95% rye, 5% rye. But in addition to the, the uh, mash bills, I also give them the work instructions. I give them the time and temperature they want to cook the grains. I give them the enzymes I want to use, the, the yeast I want to use, uh, the, the specifications for fermentation, beer chemistry, and distillation. And then when they make our whiskey, I go down and oversee the process to make sure they're following all the work instructions. So basically, I have oversight for all of them. Take it a step further. Um, I have oversight actually from bark to barrel, from bourbon to bottle. Twelve of my 45 years in the business, I worked for Brown Foreman. Familiar with Brown Foreman? Yep. I heard of this small old brand called Jack Daniels. Yeah. Well, they own Jack Daniels. They own Old Forester. They own Woodford Reserve. Good size company. But yeah. <laughs> nine of the 12 years that I worked for them, uh, I managed a cooper job. So I made whiskey, aged whiskey, bottled ship whiskey, but I've also made barrels, which is a critical component to making a great. Bottle whiskey. Sixty to seventy percent of the flavor in a high quality bottle of whiskey comes from that white oak barrel. So for chicken cock, I've been going out a year in advance. I go out to the stave mill, I go out in their log yard, and they just got big piles of logs. And I personally select the logs that we use, we cut those into staves and heading, and we set them outside and let them natural air dry for uh, nine to twelve months. About a week and a half before we're scheduled to make our whiskey in Bardstown, I go back out there. Those staves and heading come into the cooperage. They're about nine to twelve or nine to fourteen percent moisture content where they need to be. And I'm there to ensure every barrel is constructed properly, every barrel is toasted properly to a medium plus toast, and every barrel is charred properly to a number three level char. Those are our specifications. By doing that, I'm creating as much flavor as that barrel has to offer. Anyhow, so again, I have oversight from bark to barrel to bourbon to bottle. There's nobody in this industry who takes it to that extent. And we're so small that we're able to do that. What you're tasting now, this is our Kentucky Straight Bourbon. It's a mash bill, 70% corn, 21 rye, 9% malted barley, and it's a 90 proof. Now, we got two bottle styles. Most of these I've signed already, but these two bottle styles, these are actually replicas, 
pre-prohibition bottles that Chicken Cock used. Back then they were pint size. We just blew it up to 750 milliliter. This one's got what they call the old jigger cap. It's a shot glass like. And then this one, you know, people look at that and say, oh, look at that honeycomb. Has that got honey in it? I said, no, I don't have honey. Then it's chicken wire. It's 90 proof. That's by design. You know, if we let our chief financial officers of the world dictate you know, what proof it's going to be, everything be 80 proof because they get a heck of a lot more bottles out of the barrel. So at 80 <laughs> proof than they do at 90 proof. But part of that is that I taste it at barrel proof. And I start knocking it down until I get to the point where the alcohol burn subsides and allows the flavor to really overtake the profile without over diluting it. And for our Kentucky Straight Bourbon and our Kentucky Straight Rye, 90 proof is a sweet spot on those. Uh, the double oak you'll taste, it's actually 92 proof. And again, for me, the 92 proof is a sweet spot on that. This is our Kentucky Straight Rye. Again, the, the mash bill, excuse me, on this is 95% rye, 5% malted barley. Some of these 95.5 mash bills are amazing. And so I really like that. We adopted that mash bill, but then I started doing some tweaking with the work instructions, the time and temperatures on the grains, the enzymes I use. And when I have people, when I do tasting, people say, oh, I'm not a rye bearer of bourbon. So it's free. Go ahead try something. They, I, over 80% say, wow, I didn't know a rye could taste like that. Eight-year-old double oak. Now, that's your newer one, right? This is the newest one, yeah. Okay. Give you the backstory on this one. Now, this was, uh, again, it's eight years old. So this was produced, because we, we bottled it so in much. December. So this was actually produced in 2014. Now, remember, it's got to be aged in a new charred oak barrel. Well, in 2014, there was a barrel short. The fall of 2013, the winter of 13 and the 14, and the spring of 2014, we had so much rain east of the Mississippi that the ground was just saturated. The loggers couldn't get into the woods to harvest enough white oak to supply the industry. So along about September of 2014, there were no more new barrels to be had. But all these distilleries in Kentucky had tanks full of bourbon whiskey they had made, they had silos full of grain, they had the supply chain trucks coming in full of grain, they had employees they had to keep working, so they kept making whiskey. The problem was they didn't have any new barrels to put it in, so now they can't call it bourbon. So they put it in used barrels. There was a lot of this in bourbon, the whiskey to be intended as bourbon came out as whiskey. So in 2021, the founder of Grain and Barrel Mighty, he, he bought a couple of truckloads of it. Because he was going to come out with another expression on the shelf, give you a little wider shelf presence of chicken cock, different variations of chicken cock. He was going to call it uh, you know, chicken cock, seven-year-old Kentucky straight whiskey. And he said, I want you to taste it. He'd already bought it. I said, I want you to taste it. Said, okay, taste it. He said, no. Uh, Body, this does not meet our criteria of, of meeting the objective to bring the brand back to high quality product that you agreed to when I, I joined on with it. I said, it's just too grainy. It needs more flavor. And he said, well, what do we do? I said, here's what we need to do. 2021, whiskey seven years old. Let's buy some new barrels. Let's put that whiskey back into some new barrels and give it some time to really pick up the flavor. So we bought new barrels, put all that whiskey into new barrels, and I put it up on the seventh floor, the top floor of the warehouses there in Barnstown. Last summer, as it was aging and maturing, we had 85 days with the temperatures over 90 degrees. And most people are complaining, God, it's hot. It's says, hell no, this is great. I mean, that whiskey is <laughs> mature and it's driving it in that wood. This is great. And it, it was. It picked up so much flavor. So it sat in those new barrels about 18 months. And I tasted it every, every, you know, very, various times. And, and after eight, about 18 months of bottle, it's got the flavor now. So we, we dumped it and bottled it. And now it's eight years old. And so that's what we call it. So now instead of calling it Kentucky Straight Whiskey, you can call it Chicken Cot Double Oak. Eight-year-old Double Oak Whiskey, Kentucky Straight Whiskey. So that's, that's why it doesn't say bourbon on the label because it was aged first in a new barrel. Then it went into a, or a used barrel, then it went into a new barrel, the second second uh, aging of it. We actually entered this in the American Spirits competition. This won a double platinum award, the highest, highest award you can you achieve. That. I was editing this video and my closing comments sucked. The audio sucked because of the exhaust on my car. So, needed to re-record this, and I just wanna thank Gaspar's Bar, Grill, and liquor store for putting on this event. Thank you so much to Chicken Cock 
Distillery, and thank you so much for Greg Snyder. Great guy and very helpful, very knowledgeable. Hopefully, I'm able to have him on the channel on one of the videos or a live stream. We are talking, so stay tuned for that. With that said, let me know, comment below, have you guys tasted Chicken Cock, any of their offerings? How do you like it? How do you not like it? What would you pay for it? What is the price that you find it for out there? Comment below. Love talking back and forth with you guys. Thank you so much for staying on. If you're watching this till the end of the video, I really appreciate it. I know it's long, but please like or dislike this video. Please subscribe because that will really help me out as well. And lastly, I want you to enjoy that whiskey. Cheers.